So the type of anemia, when we investigate the patient, depending upon the peripheral smear, we label as micro, macro, or normocytic dimorphic. All these types will come. So where is a microcytic anemia occurring? The causes will be because of iron deficiency, thalassemia, chronic infections. In case of macrocytic anemia, whether ABC or quite big, it's called as megaloblastic anemia, or it can be non-megaloblastic also. In the megaloblastic, mainly because of the deficiency of folic acid, vitamin B12, non-megaloblastic causes are like liver diseases, hypothyroidism, myelodysplasia. When you see smear as a normocytic, it might be because of an acute loss, that is post-hemorrhagic, or it can be because of any renal or hepatic diseases, impaired marrow response, or early iron deficiency anemia. There, will, there can be my, uh, marrow hypoplasia, infiltrative disorders, or myelodysplasia. Dimorphic form, that is, you see both types of micro and macrocytic forms. That is because of iron deficiency as well as folic acid deficiency, a combined form, which usually occurs. Then hemolytic anemias, these are again two times, acquired and inherited. Inherited forms are like thalassemia, sickle cell disease, spherocytosis, G6PD deficiency, pyruvate kinase deficiency. While we come to acquired type, it is microangiopathic, as in PIH, or cardiac uh, hemolytic anemia, autoimmune disorders, or uh, pregnancy induced infections, and drugs. Pancytopenia, that is total. Even the RBC, WBC, and thromboplatelets uh, are decreased here. This is pan, everything. So this will be megaloblastic, folic acid, and vitamin B12 deficiency, or it can be a plastic anemia, which is because of drug toxicity or viral infections, or any exposure to the toxic substances. So how do you proceed with the investigations? Once we have diagnosed a patient with anemia, so how do you proceed? To rule out, we have to know the severity of anemia, cause of anemia, and the type of anemia. And accordingly, we can plan for pregnant uh, treatment. And it also depends, the treatment depends upon the gestational age at which the patient presents. So coming to the investigations, we send for complete bed picture, then we'll do a peripheral smear in that, apart from the uh, hemoglobin levels. So the peripheral smear will show malarial parasites, sickle cells, spherocytes, evidence of any hemolysis, everything will be known. In the liver function test, the causes, like bilirubin is elevated or the enzymes are elevated, it will be because of some sort of liver disease or it can be because of hemolysis also where these levels are increased. We order for the renal function test also in case of severe anemia to rule out any renal disorders where the protein levels by themselves will be decreased and thus in spite of supplementing with iron, there will not be any increase in the hemoglobin concentrations. We have to take for the serum proteins also so that we can plan for our treatment to know how the hypoproteinemia is, what level it is. Then for higher setups, it is uh, electrophoresis to know the types of abnormal hemoglobins. As a suspicion in the beginning itself, it's better to rule out the thalassemia trait, which is uh, again prevalent in our country. So we do an electrophoresis. Then you have to go for the urine examination to see the urinary tract infections any occult hematuria or any cystosomiasis, the worms that are bladder cystosomiasis is also most common. Then stool, stool we have to send for ova and cyst and also the occult blood. It's always better to take a three consecutive day stool examination rather than relying on a single day examination. Finally, if everything is treated, but in spite of that patient is not showing any development, improvement, then go for the bone marrow aspiration, which will show some abnormal cells and the iron store levels can also be evaluated to this. And X-ray test in case of high suspicion, like in pulmonary tuberculosis with the shielding of the abdomen. So this is the algorithm which shows how you have to proceed for the investigations. <clears throat> All the pregnant women 
who are presenting with less than 11 grams, that is mild anemia. In case of severe, we go accordingly, stepwise manner. So we have subjected the, we have sent for the CBC and the peripheral blood smear. Peripheral blood smear also the red blood cell indices also will center in cases of severe anemia. Then in the peripheral smear, we see only the RBC, which are abnormal. The RBCs can be micro, macro, or it can be normocytic. Microcytic anemia, we are seeing HB levels are 7 grams. Definitely, you have to send for serum ferritin levels and serum iron levels. If the levels are normal, then we can subject them to the HB electrophoresis, uh, HB A2 levels for any thalassemia trait. Today, find out if they have uh, uh, thalassemia traits or sickle cell traits or anything. Then if you have a macrocytic anemia, the smear shows IBC as macrocytes. It can be megaloblastic or it can be non-megaloblastic. Megaloblastic, the causes we know, folic acid deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency. Non-megaloblastic is because of hypothyroidism, liver disease, or myelodysplasias. For all these patients, to confirm our diagnosis, we can send for serum folate, B12, or we can just start on the treatment without even this test. TSH is definite test, thyroid function test have to be done. In case of high suspicion, you are seeing ictus also, then better to send for the liver function test. And where it is very severe and you are suspecting a Another cause of better to send for the bone marrow examination. A normal cytic. RBC are normal. That means there is no defect in the production, but uh, it's an acute loss. It can be because of post hemorrhagic. Other causes are renal hepatic diseases or impaired marrow responses. Marrow is not responding in spite of uh, normal levels of iron. It might be because of marrow hypoplasia or infiltrative disorders, myelodysplasias, dyserythropoiesis, or in the early phases of iron deficiency. This all lead to normocytic anemia. Suppose in the peripheral smear, you are seeing fragmented cells, or any spirocytes, or any sickle cells. You have to work that patient as a hemolytic anemia. In these patients, we have to definitely take the bilirubin levels, both direct and indirect. And the other tests will be like lactate dehydrogenase to know whether there is any hemolysis going on. Urine also examined for hemoglobin, hemocytrin. And the other SLE factors are also to be evaluated. Antinuclear antibodies, lupus anticoagulant, and ACA. The plasma HB has to be known. And haptoglobin levels, there will be low in these cases. And then if you have any abnormality for RBC, along with the others, like WBC is also abnormal, platelets are also abnormal. It's mostly a pan-cytopenia picture. So this is mainly because of a, a megaloblastic anemia or a plastic anemia. You have to subject them definitely to the bone marrow to know what type of anemia it is. So now that there are so many spectra of anemias, so many causes of anemias, so as we are concentrating just on iron deficiency of anemia, I have put up this slide that is a microcytic anemia where the cause is mainly because of iron deficiency. So what are the values we have to concentrate on? MCV, it will be reduced. While in a chronic cases, it can be normal. In thalassemia, it will be very, very reduced, either alpha type or a beta type. Sickle citrocytosis, it is very low. Then serum iron levels, these are also very important. In iron deficiency, it is quite low. Then iron binding capacity, it will be raised because the iron is less. This binding capacity increases. It tries to grab on whatever is available. Then serum ferritin levels, these are quite low. And iron in the marrow will be absent. If you subject them to the bone marrow, usually it's not required. It's we resorted to the last, uh, last line of uh, management, then iron in the erythroblast will also be absent. While in citrocytosis, there will be a ring forms that is peculiar to this type of disease. So we see the hemoglobin, which is reduced, red cell count, again reduced, MCV, MCH, MCHC, everything is reduced. That is 76, 27, and 32. 
the reticulocyte count will also be low. WBC will be normal, platelets will be normal, ESR, it can be normal or just low. The blood film will show microcytic, hypochromic, anisocytosis, poikilocytosis, elliptocytosis. Micro means small, hypo means the pigmentation is less because HB is less, aniso, poikilo or various types of uh, RBC we see. Elliptocytes, that is in the form of ellipse. Then the bone marrow, if you subject them, we'll see it is hypercelluloid, trying to produce more and more, but the iron stores will be very low. The serum iron levels will be low and total iron binding capacity will be raised. Serum ferritins will be very low. So these are the various pictures we'll find. So what are the normal values? What is that we find in a iron deficiency when we do the profile? So RBC count, red blood cells, that is normally the values are 4 to 5.2 per cubic millimeter, to 10 to the power 12. While in iron deficiency, it's less. MCV is in corpuscular volume, 80 to 102, but it will be less than 80 in iron deficiency. MCH, these are all the values we should definitely see, look into. MCH, 27 to 34, which is less than 27. MCHC, hemoglobin concentration, that is 33 to 37. It will be very less. So H, MCHC, MCV, and HB. This plays major role. By this, we'll know whether it is micro or not, and how the disease is. In the peripheral smear to see how the RBCR, microcytic, as have so hypochromic anisocytosis, poikilocytosis, any target cells, or elliptocytosis. When we do the serum iron studies, serum iron usually it should be 50 to 150 micrograms per deciliter. In iron deficiency, we find very less, that is 30 micrograms per deciliter. The serum ferritin levels are usually 50 to 200, but in iron deficiency, we find less than 50. Total iron binding capacity, 300 to 360, which is raised more than 400. Transferrin saturation is 30 to 50%, and again, it is less, that is 10%. Serum transferrin receptors, that is five to nine, they will be increased. It's trying to grasp. That's it. When the levels are very low, body itself tries to get it more. It makes its own changes. When it's out of it changes, we have to supplement. So bone marrow, again, the cells will be present here. The iron levels are absent.